friends, my name is Miranda, and welcome to another episode of Kid Avenger CB. Today, we are going to visit one of California's missions, Mission San Luis Rey de Francia, just by Oceanside, California. Today, we're going to learn what their history was like, what the Indians did, and how Walt Disney left his mark at the mission. So come along and enjoy the fun! nations around the globe were trying to claim land in the New World or the Americas. One inexpensive way they did this was to build religious missions in the areas they wanted to claim. They needed to send dedicated fathers, a few soldiers, and supplies to get started. To prevent Russia from getting the prime coastal land, they sent Franciscan friars to build a system of missions in what is now called California. The fathers were assigned to preach to the native peoples and to colonize them, which would develop productive citizens for Spain. Mission San Luis Rey was established on June 13, 1798 by Padre Fermin Francisco de la Suez. This was the 18th of the 21 missions built by Spain. It is known as the king of the missions because it is the largest. It also happened to be the largest building in California at that time. The mission was named after St. Louis the Ninth, king of France, who lived during the 13th century. Mission San Luis Rey is one of the only missions that is run by Franciscan friars today and is a functioning church. The church is one of the only mission churches constructed in the shape of a cross. It also t has a separate chapel of the Madonna that was most likely used for funerals, as well as providing an easy secret passageway clergy to move between different parts of the church. The cemetery is still operational and is used to bury parishioners and the retreat center provides meeting space for group events. Fortunately, the mission has been restored and upgraded with lots of minor conveniences like plumbing, electricity, and the internet. There is quite a grand fountain in the front of the mission where you can see the original adobe bricks made in the kilns there. The grander the fountain, the more successful the mission was. By the looks of this one, we can tell Mission San Luis Rey did very well. I will share a number of interesting things about Mission San Luis Rey in a minute. But first, let me tell you what life was like at the mission. And the best place to find this information is in the Missions Museum. Let's go inside the museum. While anyone can go to the mission for free, the museum is the only part that requires a nominal admission fee. 
The museum was built using about 10 rooms that used to be Friar's living quarters. In the museum, you can read, see, and touch to learn what life was like 250 years ago when the Luisenio Indians inhabited the mission. Their descendants are based primarily on the Pechanga Indian Reservation. For example, the Indians had many skills such as making tools and baskets. You can see examples of the baskets and grinding stones. Plus, you can touch and shake different things from the era. You learned how the friars lived, what they wore, and how they used paintings to start communicating with the natives since they did not have a common language at first. At the mission, they raised nearly 50,000 cattle and sheep. Plus, they grew crops of grapes, oranges, olives, wheat, and corn. You can see how they kept and prepared food. Among the more interesting pieces in the museum are the bells. The bells played an important role in daily life at the mission. In her book titled Indian Life at the Old Missions, author Edith Webb shared that the bells governed life. Bells rang to signal when the people were to pray, eat, work, play, and sleep. Webb explained that everyone who could do work had a job to do. The small children were to chase birds from the orchards and stray animals from the drying adobe bricks, or even prepare wool for spinning. At age five, children went to school to learn doctrina, or religious studies. Isn't that interesting how modern day schools also use bells to signal similar things? What do the bells signal at your school? Just like every mission, there were times of hardship at Mission San Luis Rey. At first, it was trying to communicate without a common language. Little by little, the mission began to flourish thanks to Luis Seno Indians. The Indians were used to working, then resting when they were tired. The strict schedule of mission life was tough for some of them. When these unhappy people tried to run away, the soldiers at the mission would go find them and bring them back. Then the runners were punished. After Mexico gained independence from Spain, the new Mexican government decided to turn the missions and their land over to the Indians. But the government leaders sold the land to their family members for a small fraction of the value of the mission. That was a pretty crooked thing to do and it left nothing for the Luisenio Indians. Not long afterward, anything valuable was taken from the mission and the site was left to ruin. President Abraham Lincoln returned the mission lands and buildings back to the Catholic Church in 1862. But when the military left, the mission fell into disrepair. Fortunately, in 1892, Father O'Keefe was assigned to Mission San Luis Rey to establish a missionary college. He began restoring the mission. The restoration continues on even today. Now there are a few other things unique to Mission San Luis Rey that make it a great place to visit. First, there is this amazing tree. I am here at the, at the Garden of Mission San Luis Rey. Behind me, there is the first pepper tree in California. And was grown from seeds given to the friars by a sailor from Peru. This tree is so large that its grand branches are supported by a number of metal poles. The pepper berries were primarily used as medicine. In the 1950s, the remains of the military barracks and the lavanderia were discovered under decades of dirt. The simply engineered but sophisticated lavanderia was where people washed clothes and bathed. They channeled river water through decorative spouts like this one, called a gargoyle. The water would then irrigate lower gardens and fruit orchards. 
The barracks housed a number of military personnel, which was part of the settlement requirement. Even members of the famed Mormon battalion stayed here after they completed their arduous 2,000 mile march across harsh deserts of the wild frontier. You can learn more about the Mormon battalion at a visitor center in Old Town San Diego. Now what about Walt Disney? What is his tie to the mission? Well, in the 1950s, the Walt Disney Company filmed episodes of the popular action and adventure TV series Zorro at Mission San Luis Rey. To add to the drama of the set, Disney mounted this iconic skull and crossbones on the entrance to the cemetery. And almost 70 years later, it's still there. I hope you have enjoyed today's kid adventure to Mission San Luis Rey de Francia in Oceanside, California. We have learned a bit about the history of the King of the Mission, what life was like for the native peoples here, and we got to see how the mission functions today, including how Zoro, or rather Walt Disney, left his mark on this iconic site. Thank you friends for watching my video today. Please make sure you subscribe, like, and comment anything you want in the comment section. I'll see you next time for another convention video. Bye!